In this video, you're going to see several air hockey pucks colliding with each other over a flat surface. The air coming out of the small holes causes the pucks to lift slightly off the table surface so that they can glide without friction. Our camera was mounted on some metal beams above the table, and every effort was made to make sure that the surface was perfectly level. Both of these red pucks have the same mass, M. I'm turning them to the side here to prove that they have the same shape. Now watch them collide in the absence of surface friction. Let's look at the second collision again. We'll place a dot at the center of each puck every 10 frames of video, so time intervals between each successive dot are equal. Here we're going to illustrate some velocity vectors that show motion of each object over three equal time intervals. We'll choose to illustrate the object's momentum vectors offset underneath the velocity vectors. Notice how they point in the same directions as the velocity vectors. And one frame later, the collision takes place. And then one frame after that, we have a new dot that is being placed exactly 10 frames after the previous one that appeared before the collision. Continuing from there, now we can construct new velocity vectors. and new momentum vectors. Let's look only at the momentum vectors and ignore everything else. First, we'll rearrange them, putting the final vectors on the left and the initial vectors on the right. And then we'll add them tip to tail in order to show the total system momentum before the collision and after the collision. Are the two resultants the same? They are, which shows that there was zero change in momentum of the two puck system during the time we've looked at them. How about the center of mass of this system? Watch the collision again. This time, we'll mark the center of mass position, which is equidistant from each puck's center at every 10 frames of video. I think you'll agree that the center of mass positions form a straight line and that they are evenly spaced apart, indicating that the center of mass velocity is constant. Let's look at another case. Here I'm showing that these two pucks do not have the same mass. The puck on the right, labeled 2M, is actually two pucks that have been super glued together. Let's watch these pucks collide.
Using the same strategy as earlier, we'll now place dots every 10 frames at the centers of the pucks. And we'll add velocity vectors and momentum vectors as before. But wait, there's a problem with the momentum vector number two. Since momentum is the product of mass and velocity, and the lower puck has twice the mass, we need to double the length of its momentum vector. And here's the collision. And a new dot after the collision, still 10 frames after the previous dot. Time for some new velocity and momentum vectors. Ignore everything except the momentum vectors. Add the vectors as before to find the total momentum before and after the collision. And compare them to again see that the system momentum did not change during the video. And how about the center of mass of this system? It's located two-thirds the distance from the small mass to the big mass. We'll use this handy measuring tool segmented into three equal length parts. The center of mass is down here. And once again, we see that the center of mass velocity is constant. We have one more collision to look at. Going back to the pucks with equal mass, we'll now throw the pucks from left to right and let them collide. As before, we'll mark puck positions every 10 frames and mark the center of mass position. That's seven groups of 10. How do each of the positions of the center of mass look to you? Do they form a straight line? Are they evenly spaced? They are not, in fact, in a straight line. We would need to draw a curved line to pass through each marked center of mass position. And if we really measure carefully, we can even see that the positions are not quite evenly spaced. What happened? Watch the video once more and challenge yourself to find the cause of this deviation. You see, everything happens for a reason. When I asked Mr. Olson what I needed him to do for this video, I told him that there would be no possible way that he could make it look cool. Mr. Olson took that as a challenge and easily showed that he could, in fact, make it look cool. Even though he was pointing a hairdryer at a physics demonstration, 
All he needed to do was wear these 3D glasses that he stole from a movie theater in 2009. Anyways, the point we're trying to make here is that the center of mass velocity was not constant due to an external force acting on the system. In summary, we have shown that in the absence of external net force, the total momentum vector of a system remains constant, even if the objects in the system collide. Also, the center of mass of a system will have motion in a straight line with constant speed. If there is a net force acting on the system, then the center of mass will not have constant velocity. And as a final question to think about, will the total momentum vector of a system change if there is an external net force?